All right, Foundations of Math 11, here we go. Let's get after it. We got video number three, and now we are looking at inductive and deductive reasoning. So to start with inductive reasoning, we're looking at a pattern, a numerical pattern again, just like we did in section 1.2, but now we're going to try to apply mathematical reasoning to it. And the big caveat for this is we need to predict the nth term. So now we're considering the terms in our list, right? That's my first term, my second term, my third term, my fourth term. So that's n equals 1, 2, 3, 4. And when you're looking for the nth term, you're looking for a mathematical equation in terms of n that can give you the term anywhere in the list. So look for patterns in the list. Now, in this case, it helps by building a table sometimes. So if you have a little table here, and you start by doing the term number at the top, so first term, second term, third term, fourth term, and then you look at the given value, so 3, 6, 12, 24. And now try to find a pattern by breaking those numbers down into factors or into uh, constant addition. And let's see what we get, okay? If we do uh, 3, well, 3 is 1 times 3, uh, 6 is 2 times 3, 12 is, uh, can we put it in terms of 3, right? Because I have a 3 here and I have a 3 here. So let's try that. Well, that's 4 times 3. And then 24 is 8 times 3. So there is a pattern hidden in there, right? I have a constant factor of 3, 3, 3, 3. So let's say, okay, I know my pattern is going to be 3 times something. So then let's look at the numbers we have left over. We have 1, we have 2, we have 4, we have 8. Well, what kind of pattern can you garnish from there? Well, 1 to 2 is multiplied by 2. That's multiplied by 2. That's multiplied by 2. So you can see that it's a constant multiplication. And if you remember, constant multiplication means exponents. So there's your pattern. So it's going to be 3 times 2 to the power of something, but to the power of what? And that is where you need to reconcile your n with the value. So if I need 1 and my term is 1, if I put 2 to the n, that means I have 2 to the power of 1 when n is 1. But that's not going to work because that would give me 3 times 2. And if I have this value when n is 2, I only have 2. So if I did 2 to the power of 2 here, I would get 4. So you can see that my n value is 1 more than it needs to be. So it's 2 to the power of n minus 1. And now what you can do is you can check this, you can test this, because when n is 1, you get 3 times 2 to the 1 minus 1, which is 3 times 2 to the 0, and 2 to the 0 equals 1, so we end up with this part of our pattern. And then when we move to the second term, n is now 2, we end up with 3 times 2 to the 2 minus 1, which is 3 times 2 to the 1, which, look at that, is 6. So, boom, there is our pattern. That's our pattern right there, and that pattern will give us the nth term. No matter how far we want to go down that list, say we want to know the 15th term in that list, we just plug 15 in for n, and we plug it into our equation. We have found the equation that represents that pattern. It's the hard part, but there are some strategies. So there's a difference when you notice an arithmetic pattern, so one that has a common difference, and one that has a um, nonlinear pattern. So we can call it a geometric pattern. It's a pattern that doesn't go up by a common factor. And that's our common uh, difference. So if you remember video 1.2, I always talked about, well, is there an addition change that we can find first? And in this case, there is. We're adding 6 to every single term, which means we have a common difference of 6 n. No matter what the, the nth term is, we know it's going to be a multiple of 6. But that is not enough to get us our solution. We need to reconcile how do we get term 1. Term 1 is 2, which means when n equals 1, we should have the number 2. And here, when n equals 1, we have the number 6. So how do we make 6 into 2? Well, subtract 4. And there it is. That's your pattern. Because you know you're going to have a common difference of 6, and we just got to figure out where did we start. And by subtracting 4, we start at 2. And now everything else will be a factor of 6. So that is our pattern. We get our common difference, and then we reconcile our first term. We try to figure out what makes it our first term. Perfect. Awesome. Great. There's another way to look at this in the notes, so feel free to have a look there. But that's probably the most straightforward. Look to reconcile your pattern. So let's look at another one, still arithmetic. What's the difference here? 4, 4, 
4. Okay, so we have 4n. But when n is 1, we have 3. So how do we get from 4 to 3? Well, we just subtract 1. There is your pattern. That is your nth term. Typo. Term. So now, what if we don't have a common difference? Now we've got to look at it a little bit of a different way. Okay, can we find a pattern? Well, that's 2 plus 4, but now it's 6 plus 6, and then 12 plus 8. So we can't use plus because it's not common. So let's look at multiplication. That's uh, 2 times 3, 6 times 2. Oh boy, that's not really working either. So we can't look at that. So let's get our table out. And let's see how we can break these things down. And this, this is the thing, is it's not always going to just happen easily. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's my n value, my term. So my first term is a 2, then a 6, then a 12, then a 20, then a 30. So let's just look and see how we can break this down. Well, 2 is 1 times 2, 6 is 2 times 3, 12 is 3 times 4, 20 is 2 times 10, 30 is 2 times 15. So looking at that, I don't really have a pattern. If you got an eagle eye, you might see a bit of a pattern. 1 times 2, 2 times 3, 3 times 4. But then when you get to 2 times 10, you don't have uh, that pattern continue. But consider the factors. That's 2 times 2 times 5, right? Because 10 is just 2 times 5. And what's 2 times 2? Well, it's 4. So now you have 4 times 5. Ah, and that pattern has continued. And what's 2 times 15? Well, that's 2 times 3 times 5. Well, 2 times 3 is 6, so now we have 5 times 6. So there is our pattern. You see the first number is n, right, n. And the second number is n plus 1, 1 more than our n value. So that is our pattern. Not easy to find, and that's why these are difficult, but that's why they take practice and observation. So let's do one more here. We got another pattern. We got 1, 6, 15, 28. Well, let's see what happens. Do our little table. Boom, 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 boom. So 1, 2, 3. I actually only have 4 in this case, so get rid of that last bit of my table. Now what do we have? We have 1, we have 6, we have 15, we have 28. Okay, well, 1 is just 1 times 1. Not much I can do there. 2 is 2 times 3. 15 is 3 times 5. Uh, 28 is 4 times 7. Okay, so I kind of see a pattern. Now, the first pattern to notice is boom, 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 boom. Those are my n values. So that could be my first factor of my pattern. So then the second bit to look at is the remaining numbers. 1, 3, 5, 7. Now is there a pattern between those? And here we actually see that's plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. We have uh, a common difference. So we have this pattern like we saw at the beginning of the video for arithmetic. We have a difference of 2. But what is my first number? How do I reconcile that? It's 1, so I need to go 2 minus 1. So that is the pattern of my second factor. So I have n times 2n minus 1. And there is your pattern. Again, not easy to find. I've been doing these for a while. Now, let's quickly look at deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning is when you arrive at a conclusion from information given. You deduce facts from facts. So you cannot make uh, an error. If there is an error in the facts, your solution cannot be valid. So you have premises and you have conclusions. So here's an example. All planets move around the sun in an elliptical orbit, which means a slightly oval orbit. Saturn is a planet. Okay, so what can we determine from this? We can determine that Saturn moves in an elliptical orbit. You tie the information together, right? If all planets move in an elliptical orbit and Saturn is a planet, then it must move in an elliptical orbit. So one piece justifies the other piece. Um, every even number is divisible by 6 is divisible by 3. Now, this is an example where we get things called counterexamples. If you need to prove something false, prove a statement false, it's simple. You just find one exception to the statement. 
Proving things true is difficult because you need to prove it's true for every possible case. But proving false is great. Find one thing that is not true. So in this case, every number divisible by 6 is divisible by 3. Well, that means every single number divisible by 6. So all I have to do is find a number divisible by 6. But I want you to think here for a sec. If you're divisible by 6, you must be divisible by the factors of 6, which are 2 times 3. So if you're divisible by 6, then you're divisible by 2, and you're divisible by 3. So this statement is true. That's a scenario where you can find a truth, because this does not lie to me. If you're divisible by 6, you must have a factor of 3. Now here's another example. A number bigger than 12 is divisible by 12 if it's divisible by 2 and 3. So all we have to do here is find a counterexample. Well, let's just look. If it's divisible by 2 and 3, we now know it's divisible by 6. So let's look at the multiples of 6, because those are all divisible by 2 and 3. Do you see any number in that list that is not divisible by 12? I see a bunch. Can't divide that by 12. Can't divide that by 12. So, boom, I found one. 18, exception to your rule. I found one counterexample. We're done. Now, the last thing you want to look at here is when you have a list of premises and you're trying to come up with solutions. If you're a fan of office space, this gentleman wants to create a jump to conclusions mat where you can jump to a specific conclusion. Do not do that here. Okay, you need to use the information you have and you can only deduce if the information is valid. Otherwise, it's a nice statement, but there's nothing you can do with it. So here's an example. If you're a person must be 16 years old to have a driver's license. So what can we deduce? So Fred has a driver's license. So Fred has a driver's license and you must be 16 years old. So we know that Fred must be 16 or higher, right? Mike drives a car. Okay, good for Mike. It says nothing about Mike's uh, status of age, and it says nothing about him having a driver's license. So we actually can't assume anything. He could be driving without a license. So in this case, we just say nothing. There's nothing I can deduce with certainty about Mike. I could come up with a whole bunch of assumptions, but we don't want to come up with assumptions. We want certainty. So Mike, sorry, nothing we can do for Mike. Kevin is 20. Well, good for Kevin. He's older than 16, so he could have a driver's license but maybe he doesn't. So again, we can deduce nothing. Aurora. Now, this is the opposite case of Kevin. Aurora is 12, which means Aurora is not old enough to have a driver's license. So we can say with certainty that Aurora does not have a license. We can't say the same thing for Kevin because he's older and it's his choice. But for Aurora, she has no choice. No driver's license for you. And then the last one, Phil does not drive a car. Okay, well, that doesn't mean Phil doesn't have a driver's license. And we also do know nothing about Phil's age. So again, nothing. So you need to be careful with your deductions, because if you're making any assumption within your, um, your conclusion to a premise, then you're not actually uh, making a conclusion based on fact. So your conclusion has to be undisputable. Otherwise, you're jumping to conclusions, and they could just be assumptions. So be careful there. So that's our video on deductive reasoning. The last video is going to be on puzzles. I'm going to introduce just a number of different puzzles. I will uh, describe the puzzle and then basically give you time to pause the video before I solve it for you. Puzzles are simply an exercise in thinking. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.